Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, thank you, uh, Ouija, for that raid. Um, hello, everybody. We're here with uh, a teacher B one shot of um, the islands of Sina Una. Got some amazing people here, and I'll leave them to introduce themselves soon. But I do want to give everyone a quick rundown of what exactly we're doing here. Um, we're going to be raising money. We've got this stream, and we've got one on Friday. We're going to be raising money for um, Stop a API Hate. I don't know if you... And I'm not going to say you probably haven't heard of this. You've definitely heard about it. There's been a lot of hate going on with um, um anti-Asian hate crimes. It's always been a problem, but it's just been on, on the up and up, especially past this past year. So we want to do what we can to help out and counter that. So we're going to be raising money for Stop AAPI Hate today on Friday. And um, if, if you have anything to give, please, please do. You could put exclamation point charity and that will... Um, that Nightbot will send a link to where you can go to our Twitterfy campaign and donate. Um, every little helps. Um, exclamation point info will tell you, send you to the site of Stop AOP I Hate so you know exactly what you're donating to because I know that's very important. And if you do um, exclamation point incentives, you can see what you can redeem those donations for because this is not going to be a passive game. You're not going to just have to watch. You can actually affect how well everyone does by um, donating depending on how much you donate. Um, Thank you, Fonagedon. If you just read all of that, uh, you'll know exactly what you can donate for and what you can redeem those things for. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't want to hold everyone up because this is going to be a ton of fun with this cast. So I'm going to pass on over to Paladin. He's going to be the GM of this game. Paladin. Oh, can you hold on a sec? Apparently we're muted. Apparently. That is odd. Okay, properties. <laughs> I guess. Oh, uh, Good, we're getting it out. Yeah, I'm... Can you say something, everyone, again? No? That is odd. Oh god, I'm very sorry everyone. Bye, <laughs> We're good. You good this, now? This is good. I think I can hear you. I think the bar's moving, so I think it can be. There we you go. Now. We got every I think we got everyone. <laughs> Mike, Mike check, Mike where you at? Okay, cool. So yeah, they could hear me, but they couldn't hear you guys. So I've already said everything I used to say. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it back over to you. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> It's all right. I mean, hey. stuff happens. Hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is HTP Paladin. I'm the DM for this one shot. I was co-director and co-director for the Islands of Sina Una. I'm a TTRPG content, content creator who works too much because I think I can get away with not sleeping. Uh, let me throw it over to Lucia. Lucia, who are you? Take two. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, um, yeah, I was the lead director on the Islands of Sina Una. Um, so we're really excited to get that to physical soon. Just, you know, COVID happened. Um, but yeah, you can find me everywhere as your sword and I'm excited to be playing today. I'll pass it over to Kappa. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Kappa. I, you know, I'm sorry. My name is Christian. I also go by Kappa in the TTRPG space. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I have been in the space for a little, quite a little, just you know, a little little bit amount of time compared to everyone else. So, whew, I'm I'm a little nervous if you can't tell, but I'm excited. Uh, we're doing this for a great cause, and I'm really excited to play with everyone here. Um, let's go, chance. 
Hi, <laughs> my name is Chance of Chancelin. I have been playing TTRPGs for a little over 15 years, but I've only been doing like stream related TTRPG stuff for about the last six months or so. And I have a sleeping St. Bernard behind me, so I apologize if you hear her snoring. <laughs> and to Lily. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> dog but hopefully later um me my name's lily i run a lot of games play a lot of characters mostly run pbta haven't played DD &D in a minute but if i'm gonna play D, &D it should be with all these amazing people and it will be so look at that very excited to be here today and uh thank you all so much for being here today audience and cast and crew and everything it's just such a great cause so Let's do it. And before we get into the game today, I want to say that we do have a pretty decent giveaway going on right now, everybody. Today, we are giving away two $25 gift card codes for Dice Envy, as well as two books for Roll20, a copy of Candlekeep Mysteries, and a copy of Cobalt Press's Midgard, Midgard Hero Handbook. I can speak English. I have been speaking it for 27 years. I don't know why I keep messing it up. Uh, to enter this giveaway, just put into the chat exclamation point Sina Una, that is S I N A U N A, right after an exclamation point. Uh, we'll pull two winners after the break and two winners right before we end for today. So if you don't win the first time, stick around, you might win at the very end. And that again is exclamation point Sina Una. And without further ado, <clears throat> Nasi Rakhna is an island most known for being home of beasts, not just monsters, but there are animals here that are so old and have accumulated so much power that some of them have become more elemental, more spirit than flesh and bone. These were the original denizens of this island, and it's only long, long after that they, became, they came here that many of the mortal races arrived. And while there are two settlements on the island of Nasi Rakhna, and amid its just beautiful teal pools, white petal trees, even mushroom forests, there is a settlement known as Sang de Angalon. Throughout part of the year, it sails on boats in and around the island's waters. But during some seasons, you, with manta rays they befriended, they sail through the air for days on end. Most notably, they do this when it is monsoon season, when the seas are too rough to traverse normally, too rough for the spirits of boats to be commandeered to overcome them. Sang de Angolon and its flotilla that travels around the waters is currently high above them, lashed to their manta ray companions. And it is here that we meet our heroes. Could I ask Kiko, what do you look like? Kiko is a small Umelagad, which is our dragonborn. So he's um, around the age of eight or nine. He's um, this alabaster skin um, dragonborn with kind of a longer, more crocodile-like face. Um, and he's wearing pretty common clothing. You can see that he has like a couple of trinkets attached to him. Um, and he's sitting, probably looking at different vegetation with his spear in one of his hands and kind of searching around for bugs and other creepy crawlies. You are able to get a few flies here and there who are trying to escape this current midday downpour that you all find yourselves in. It's still sunlight out. It's still beautifully lit, but there's a bit of a heavy rain going on. And as they flee to the to this over to this hanging boat, there you are, ready to get them. <laughs> Can I ask Kim? What do you look like? Kim is a uh, small. She's a gold gnome. So I picture her being, you know, maybe like 
four feet ish, maybe a little tall for a gnome actually, but you know, uh, small. Uh, she has skin that I think is the color of like polished wood, like not like a really dark wood, like a mahogany, but more like a, a chestnut, like polished chestnut. She has um, very thick golden hair that I think she has dyed with literal gold. Don't ask me the alchemy of it. It's a very particular secret of her family. So uh, this very kind of like powdered gold looking hair that's twisted back into um, braids all along. And she is wearing a uh, very simple but very elegant gold jewelry. She likes gold is clearly a theme that we're seeing here. Uh, so like small gold earrings and bracelets. And I think at this time, actually, she is probably um, examining her bracelet because there was like the a very minor scratch that happened on it and she's just it's like ruining her day that she has noticed this scratch she doesn't know where it came from she doesn't know how it happened she needs to get somewhere immediately so she can break out her tools and like buff it out or something um so she's like low-key freaking out but she doesn't show it <laughs> okay as a gold gnome, what tattoos you've accumulated over your over your lifetime of adventuring, um, slowly but surely, they all start to get a gold glimmer to them. So in amidst this drab rain, in amidst this daytime shower, you are still very reflective, shining out as you soar above the spines of Nasi Rakhna. Ulan, what do you look like? Ulan is a Carabao tiefling, um, very well built, very tall. Uh, his days out on sea have weathered his body in a way that he's 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 strong and stocky, but also there's a bit of leanness to it. Uh, his skin is uh, dark and tanned from uh, days out in the open ocean underneath the sun, baking. Um, his black horns uh, uh, form a crescent. From his from his uh, the top of his head the crown of his head towards the back as most Carabao uh, are, uh, are do he is uh, where he, he he's wearing very minimal clothing as and uh, uh, just lying out on the beach letting the rain uh, 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 caress his skin and uh, uh, his, his namesake Ulan meaning rain. Okay. Um, Ulan, you're no stranger to rough weather. You're no stranger to rough travels, but currently without a boat of your own, being at kind of the whim of other people's sailing abilities, which, you know, sometimes aren't up to your par, it's, it's been rough and a little bit stressful. But you're thankful, not to say that you are, not just put words in your mouth or words, words into your head, but there's a little bit of a reprieve from having to sail when you fly high above the waves, especially now during the stormy weather there, where down below you can see huge waves hitting against these massive stone spines, these massive stone pillars and against the beaches of Nasirachna. Buil, what do you look like? So Buil, she is an elf of the Baleti trees, and so she's about 5'5". Five, five. And her hair is about waist length because she takes great pride in her hair, mostly for the fact that it has a lot of roots and vines kind of going through it that look very similar to the Baleti tree. And she wears a head wrap, but mostly around the top of her head to help keep the hair out of her face, but she doesn't tie it up because she is proud to have it out and displayed. Um, her overall outfit, she has just a very simple carabao reinforced leather chest piece, and then she has a sarong type skirt that she wears, so that way she can showcase her legs and her arms as they are covered with various tattoos from the various uh, awards and wars and things like that that she has accomplished and has had put on her body. Gotcha. And Buil, <clears throat> you are a lore chanter. Um, yes. I mean that you you've collected stories from around the world uh, along your travels. You know two very big things about Nasi Rakhna. The first is that the Balate tree here is one of the oldest in the world. And for trees that live sometimes hundreds of years, that's saying something. The tree here has seen 
entire settlements, has seen entire generations come and go in, a, in the blink of its spiritual, in, in, in the blink of one of its eyes, essentially. It's seen things come and it's seen things go. It's seen nearly the end of the world and it's still here while other people are gone. It's not really a doorway for people. It's more a doorway for the massive creatures that dwell in Nasi Rakhna. And you know that it's one of the most heavily guarded areas in the world. You also know another thing. You know that Nasi Rakhna is not a place purely of stone and dirt and sand. You know that Nasi Rakhna is built on the back of the great turtle Anino, who was chained down to, to kind of contain its great rage. It's still there. It's still alive. But as creatures come and gain power and become more elemental, whatever Nino has become in the centuries and eon that's been alive, it's something else entirely. You know that somewhere on that somewhere on Nasi Rakhna is a pool known as the Blue Maw. And it is a focal point for a lot of rites and a lot of rituals and traditions for the people who dwell in or around Nasi Rakhna. A massive whirlpool that people believe leads to Anino's mouth. Thus, the Blue Maw. But currently, you're all on these hanging vessels, on these flying manta rays, being addressed to by the two Datus, or leaders, of Sangda Angalon, Surya and Ninuel, who are looking over the sides of one of their ships down below. It is Surya who is dressed for this air chill who talks first. Thank you all for coming. I know it's not easy to get up here, but thank you for making the fly up here. Are you all well? A lot of rain. <laughs> I'm doing well. It, I don't fly often, so a little, little motion sickness. I don't know about you, but I'm doing great. I mean, that sounds great. It would be great to be great, but I have a scratch on my bracelet that is very alarming. Do you know when we will be landing? I would attempt to try and buff it out while we're in the air, but I have a feeling that that will end poorly. Are you opposed to magic? Well, no, I am a sorcerer, but when working with jewelry, it is best to use your hands. That's what my grandma... We will not be landing soon, but once, <gasps> once you are all on the ground, you can fix your jewelry if you find the time. I guess so. <laughs> Thank you again for in such dire times. I Surya pat kind of him on the back. <laughs> Surya looks to Ulan, which is kind of a, a, a slow look of concern. Is there, is there a spider on me? Oh no. No, no, no. There is no spider, I think. There could be a spider on you. Oh no. And uh, Ulan kind of turns around, trying 